it's John Swartz with Miller Electric. We're here in Burbank, California at Hollywood Hot Rods. I'm here with Sean Ramaj, and today we're going to be talking TIG welding, but we're going to do something a little bit different than we have in the past. Typically we've shown a lot of videos where we've been doing TIG welding on aluminum. Today we're going to be doing some mild steel, and in particular we're going to be welding on this Packard frame. Sean, why did you guys choose uh, TIG welding for this as opposed to, say, MIG welding? Uh, mainly for the heat control and good penetration since we're going to be grinding down a lot of the welds. Okay. Now is this something you're going to weld all the way through from beginning to end or are you going to do something different? Uh, we're actually going to do it probably every six inches. I'll do maybe a little two inch pass. Okay. And why would you do something like that on this uh, one? Spread the heat out. Okay. We keep the warping down. Okay. Well, good. What we did here is we uh, spliced two pieces of metal in together. We ended up putting a probably 3 16 bevel on both pieces because we're going to grind the weld down. Uh, the top and we want to make sure we have good enough enough penetration and enough weld on it so when we grind it down we don't have any cracks later and then um, so we don't weld it solid we want to keep the warping down we're gonna uh, do probably two inch welds every six inches spread out the heat a little bit better and then we'll come back over and just lap them over all right I'm gonna go ahead and grind the weld down and then uh, once I start knocking off the top of the weld, if it starts picking up these other sides, then the weld's pretty sunk. So what I'll end up doing is uh, knock this down so it stays pretty level. Checking the frame to see how much the center where we welded dips down, just to see what we need to bring up so I can pick up the rest of the weld and knock it down flat. Still high right there. Now what Sean's doing, he talked about working the outside of that channel down to kind of even up the, uh, the, the top portion of the weld itself so as he can grind it off it can be flush. But, but what he was just doing was actually pounding up the center of the weld to kind of even it out so when he goes back to grind it again, the whole top part of the channel is, is even. So we'll have a finished portion and basically uh, what he would need to do next along the channel. Alright, so we got this knocked down and leveled up. I marked off a few of the uh, low spots from the welding. We're just gonna go back through over with the TIG welder right now and just kinda fill those little spots off, knock it off, so we don't take too much of the material off. Okay. It's probably about 80% done. After we'd uh, leveled all this out, get it to this point right here, mm -hmm. what we do is uh, spray it with Dicom, level it out with a body file, just to mainly pick up any low spots that were really big, noticeable low spots. Okay. And then uh, we just DA the frame and we have the uh, finished parts on the back of the frame. Okay, good. So just to recap, some of the things that we uh, kind of went over here today was one, we chose the TIG process because the end weld itself is a little bit more malleable. Uh, we prepped the material with a bevel groove just to get full penetration on some thicker material. And we used the TIG process just because it gave Sean a little bit better control over the heat to prevent a little bit of warpage. So with that, thanks a lot, Sean. Mm -hmm. Appreciate all the uh, education. See you guys next time.